James chapter 2 verse 26 in the King James it says this for as the body without the spirit is dead so faith without works is dead also now let's analyze the scripture for a minute the body this fleshly temple for as the body without the spirit belongs to God is dead without the spirit is dead so faith which is the spirit, our spirit, combined with works of the flesh, is dead also. So without faith, works. Without faith, or so faith rather, let me get that right. So faith without works is dead. Faith without works. You can believe something all you want to, but until you put some feet to your faith, no one's going to know about it. You can have faith in something for a thousand years, but until you start practicing faith, speaking faith, walking in faith, talking in faith, administering in faith, until you start proclaiming faith, obeying the word of God by faith, reaching out to others by faith, amen, witnessing by faith, until you start doing those things, your faith is dead. It's alone. It has no value. So here's what I want to talk about tonight. It's, it's, it's something you won't hear all the time, but you're going to hear it tonight, maybe just for 20, 30 minutes. Maybe no longer than that. But I want to talk to you, Sister Virginia. Love you. You can see you at home now. Uh, this, all right, are y'all ready? 100% in church and 100% out of the will of God. We have this colloquial idea in Pentecostalism that if you're in church, you're in church. We even refer to people, uh, do you know them? Yeah, yeah, I know I met them before. Are they in church? Well, what does that mean? Do they like show up when it's time for church? Are they in the building when we get started? Have they ever been here before in the church? Are they rooted and grounded in what they believe? Does it, does it mean that? Does it mean they're faithful every time the church house doors are open? Does it mean that they believe the message, preach the message, uh, act upon the message? What, what does in church mean? A lot of people think that once you get in church, you got to make. I'm not talking about just get up in the building and sit down. Because some people are only interested in God's economy on, on where can I sit? The mother of the sons of Zebedee went to Jesus. And she said, Master, she said, I have two sons. She said, could you please tell me uh, 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 of which of the two sons are going to sit on your right hand and which are going to sit on the left hand? All she wanted to know is where can my sons come to sit down? I'm observing every face. Or she want to know where do we come sit? He said, well, I don't know. They ain't mine to give. Like Brother Robert said, ain't ain't a word. He said, but that's not mine to give. He said, that's only the father business to give. He said, I, I, I don't know. He said, them boys ready to drink of the cup I'm ready to drink from? She said, oh, yes. Yeah. She answered for them. Yes, they are. She wanted her son to be very, very popular in and, and, and she wanted them to be, be in a high place politically with the Lord. Are, are they willing to drink from the cup? I'm willing to drink from Oh, yeah, they are, Lord. Mm, bring it on. They'll drink it. The Lord said, were they willing to, to drink from the cup that I'm going to drink from? Are they willing to do what I'm, willing, what I'm going to have to do? Yeah, boy, just bring it on. Whatever it is, they'll do it. Well, she just sealed their death. She sealed their doom. Because just as he was crucified, they were crucified in the end. And they drank from the cup of martyrdom just like he did. She answered for them. Well, yeah. Whatever you want, whatever you will to do, they will to do. They just want to sit down somewhere. Now, some people could get in the church because they want to know just where can I sit down? Have you ever heard about doing a work for God? We're going to hear about it tonight. Do the work for God. How many of you can actually say, I'm doing the work for God. I'm working for the Lord. Now all of us can shout till our eyeballs bug out this phrase, God's working for me. 
Because he is. Come on, children. Breathe in. Breathe out. He's still working. He's still working. The Lord's still with me. He hadn't pulled the plug yet. Mm, somebody need to be thankful God hadn't pulled the plug yet. No one's promised tomorrow. Quit getting all hung up about what you're going to do next week, next year, 10 years from now. You just get started worried about what you're going to do today. As long as you do this. Spirit of God 
to be in the place that you're in tonight, but yet you have yet to assume the role that God has for your calling. I will tell you this, God has a place for everybody in his kingdom. And the last time I checked, there's no dichotomy for sinners. There's plenty of sinners out there and there's plenty of sin, but where sin doth abound, grace doth much more abound. And God's got people in the church that I believe are ready, willing, and waiting to do the job. Now you got to ask yourself, what am I waiting on? A lot of people are waiting on a lot of different things before they do a work for God. Some people say, I'm just happy at the level I'm at. I'm just happy where I'm, I'm, I'm at, at a level. I'm just happy at this level. I'm at the, I'm in here, but I ain't doing nothing. Level. But I'm in here. I'm in here. Or I'm doing a little something that don't stretch me too far. You know what that's like? You want me to tell you what that's like spiritually? That's like Jesus carrying the cross of Calvary halfway up Calvary's hill, then throwing him down on the ground and looking at his disciples and saying, You're not worth it. You're not worth me carrying this cross to the top of that hill and laying down my life. You and other stinking people on this earth are worth it. That's when you get to this place where I'm just in here, but you know, everything's cool. I just don't have to you know, sacrifice too much, but I'm, I'm still in here. Y'all with me? Yeah. That's all right. You know what? You know what I found out after 25 years of preaching? 25 years of, after, of 25 years of following the leadership of the Holy Ghost and obeying God in services? You know what? I'm not responsible for your, for your decision. I just deliver the word. I just deliver what God told me to tell you. And I just tell you what the Lord told me in the Holy Ghost that the church needs to hear. So you know what? It's up to you whether you obey it, whether you get on fire, whether you get on board, whether you do anything or not. It's up to you whether you put your feet, some feet to your faith and start doing something with what you've heard. That's not my business. That's not for me to worry about. My God, I'm worried about whether what all y'all is going to do when I got through this message. I'd be out of my mind. Oh, I wonder if they're going to get it. I wonder if they're going to do it this time. Oh, this is the 4,967th time I told them. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's just up to you and to what you do with it. It ain't up to me. You know what? I'm going to leave this place here in a little while. I'm going to eat a hamburger. I'm going to go to my house and go to bed. And I'm going to sleep tonight. Because you know what? I'm doing a work for God. Amen. I'm going to stand before the Lord Almighty one day. And I'm going to hang my head when he said, did you do a work for me? I'm going to say, Lord, I tried my best. I gave him my best. I preached what you told me to preach. I tried to build a fire under your people. We're trying to build a kingdom here, folks. We're trying to raise up a church here in the last day. We're trying to win our friends, our family, people we don't even know. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to win them. We got to put some feet to our faith and do a work for God. Yes. Faith is the key to every victory in God. Without faith, there is no victory. That's right. That's good. That's good teaching. Hebrews chapter 10, 38. Now the just or those that are right or those that are righteous shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. You know what? We'll start doing something that requires a little more of our time. We start doing a little something that requires a little more of our sacrifice. We start doing a little something that requires a little more of us financially. And then when we get so deep into that and we don't see the results that we think well, ought to see, then we start bowing out. We start resigning. We start giving up our position. We start calling and saying, I don't think I can work in this department anymore. I don't think I can teach anymore. I don't think I can work in the nursery anymore. I don't think I can be a nursery anymore. I don't think I can do when you don't see what you think you ought to see early on. Let me tell you something. You ain't doing it for the people in the first place. You ain't doing it for me in the first place. You're not doing it for the church in the first place. The thing that you took on to do, you took on because you had a passion to do something for God. If you want to resign, go to the prayer room and tell the Lord I resign. Don't call me. 
Tell him first. If he's okay with it, come talk to me. There's never been a greater time to do a work for God. The days are evil. There is darkness all around us. I'm here to tell you right now, America is in a mess. And I don't care who you think you're, if you're going to vote for Hillary or Trump or, 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 or whatever you think, I'm here to tell you, there ain't no good candidate. <laughs> We're in a mess. Boy, the world needs God right now in, in three ways, brother. Mom, tell me. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. We need the Lord. But I'll tell you what, if there was a time we need to get on board and start doing a work for God. Start making a showing for God. It's the day in which we live. The Bible talks about the parable of the talents. It said the one was given one, the one was given two, the one was given five. The Lord went on a journey. They're supposed to do something with the talent. When they come back in, the one who had five had ten, the one had two had four, and the one that had one went and buried it somewhere. What was that one talent that the Lord gave his trusted servant? It was his gift. It was the Holy Ghost that he planted inside the heart and life of that individual. It was the gift of God. That's why it's called the gift of the Holy Ghost. He planted one gift and when he came back that servant had done nothing with his gift. To the one that had the ten he gave all the talents over to him. And to the one who had the one who buried it. The Lord looked at that servant and he said I want you to know something. You could have at least drawn interest on this talent. You could have made something of what I gave you. I want to hear tell you right now, if you don't think nothing about the gift of God, if you don't think nothing about the grace of God, if you don't think nothing about the work of God, the, the gift of God's Spirit, you need to check yourself. You need to pull a spiritual dipstick on your soul and see if your Holy Ghost has run out. I'll tell you right now, we need to be thankful for the gift of God. Thankful that God talks to us, walks with us, deals with us, inspires us, and is here to deliver us. But I will tell you this. To the one he gave one and he buried it in the ground. He did nothing with it. That's just like a child of God coming into the church, receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, being baptized in Jesus' name, but never winning a soul. Never bringing anyone else to God. Never seeing anyone else saved under your witness, your ministry. That's exactly what that's like. And one day the Bible said, he's going to look at us. And he's going to say, I want you to take this wicked, listen to the second word he calls this person, unprofitable servant. Do you understand when we come into God's economy that we are precious gems to God? That we are people, the Bible said that he's going to make up the jewels that go in his crown and you and I are going to be those jewels that we are precious when we come to God. We are the jewels of God's kingdom and he wants us to take that which is of great value and make something out of it. Amen. Amen. He said one day I'm going to gather up my jewels. What day is that? The rapture of the church. Will be the day he gathers up his jewels. Yes, yes, but what have his jewels done with the value and the splendor and the glory that God places in our lives? He said, Cast this wicked, unprofitable servant. He said the same thing there that, that John said in the book of Revelation when he saw he that was on the throne that judged them according to the things which were written in the books. He said there were going to be those who go to the right and those who go to the left. And those that go to the left, he's going to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. The same thing that Jesus said in his parable. He said, his parable, he said, I want you to be cast into outer darkness where there's weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. That's exactly where he told them to cast this unprofitable servant. If you're not doing a work for God, you're not in the will of God. I come to tell you straight up here tonight, not pulling any punches. If you ain't working for God, if you have the grace of God, the power of God, the love of God, the mercy of God in your life, and you're not doing anything for God, you're not in the will of God. You are absolutely 110,000% out of God's will. If you know Him, He loves you, He saved you, He... He redeemed you. He bought you by His blood. He's purchased you. He, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You're sitting up here eating from the Master's table. Everything that comes across this table is good. Not because I do it, but I'm telling you, we 
bring in the very best ministers and preachers and singers in the United States of America and sometimes around the world. And if you eat what they're what they're providing, you get the very best. If you get all that, you just get fat and sassy. And you ain't doing nothing for God. You are out of the will of God. Bring it. Wow. You better enjoy this because it's the only glimpse of heaven you're ever going to see. It's what you see right up in here, right now, when the glory falls. Mm. My Lord. It's entirely possible to have the Spirit of God in your life. Come to church every service. Pay your tithe. Sing every song. Listen attentively to this sermon and fail to start using your faith and be 110% out of the will of God. <clears throat> Not only are you out of God's will, but I'll tell you, in, you're in a more dangerous place than that. You're 100% out of God's favor. Nothing, Scripture tells us, nothing can stop the favor of the Lord. When God favors you, when God is on your side, the Bible said he makes crooked places straight. He goes before us and makes a way where there seems to be no way. He cuts asunder gates of brass, bars of iron, removes the two leaf gates, and lets us walk through. He parts oceans, destroys enemies. Amen? When you have the favor of the Lord. But the Bible tells us plainly this, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. So if you ain't pleasing Him, you can know Him, He can know you. You can be up in here, you can be receiving everything He got and doing nothing with it. You just piling it on. You just got a whole boatload of it when you go out to the car. I will tell you this, that's fine and good, but it ain't going to save you. The Bible said back in the days of the Old Testament, when, when the, the, the tabernacle, the wilderness was established, and you know, man had come down from heaven. That was the only food they had for 40 years. The Bible said, every man of his house, you take an omer. And that was a jar. It said, you take a jar that is a certain, but the copy was a, it was a jar of a certain height, space, and it had a certain measurement. He said, you take an omer, or a jar, out every morning, Brother Young, and when that man is on the ground, you go out there and you get your omer full of that, that bread from heaven. And you bring it into your house and you part it unto everyone that's in the house so that everyone in the house can eat. But he said, listen, on a Sabbath day, you don't go out and gather up more because you're not supposed to gather. You're not supposed to reap or toil on the Sabbath. You go out there and you get enough on Friday to last you through the weekend, but you better not go out there on Saturday and get more than you need. And the Bible said to those that took another jar out and didn't trust the Lord and filled up not only the jar the Lord told them to fill up, but filled up the second jar. That when they went back the next day when they was hungry, and they got in that jar that all the man had turned to worms. Let me tell you something. God provides everything this church needs. God provides every message this church needs. God provides the teaching this church needs to make it from earth to glory. I am confident of that. I'd lay my life on that. And let me tell you something, honey. I've got to lay my life on that because I'm going to be judged according to what comes across this pulpit, who we bring here, and who delivers across this pulpit. And if it ain't doing you no good, you need to get rid of me. I'm here to tell you straight up tonight that you can be in the church and out of God's will. You can be out of God's favor if you're not doing the work for God. You say, there's other reasons people don't do the work for God. It's just too much sacrifice. It's just too much sacrifice. I don't know if I'm willing to go there. I don't know if I'm willing to do that. I don't know if I'm, I'm willing to be, 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 be used of God. I want to be used of God, but I'm not willing to pay that price. You know, Jesus paid the ultimate price for humanity. The Bible said that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 
I don't know how you feel when you owe a debt, but I don't call my debtor and say, hey, listen, I know you provided this great service for me, this great thing for me, but, but I, I, I just, I don't feel like I owe you anything now. I don't feel like I owe you anything for this car I'm driving, this house I'm living in. I'm just going to stop paying on it. And I'm just going to live in it and drive it anyway. How far are you going to get? And be in favor. I said, how far are you going to get and be in favor on terms like that? Can I just simply say this for a minute? And I'm already over my time. We must not fail to use our faith. Romans chapter 12 said, God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. You know what? We have the key to living an overcoming, power-filled, anointed, favored of the Lord life. We really do. We really do. Amen. But do we use the keys that we have? If you don't use the key to what we have, the faith that we know is true, speaking by faith, walking by faith, acting by faith, praying by faith, praying in faith that good things will happen, speaking by faith instead of speaking in doubt, fear, and confusion. Well, it's like getting up to go to work and walking out to the driveway and staring at your new car and wondering why you're not getting there. It's like being hungry. I mean, absolutely starving to death and going over and sitting in front of a refrigerator full of food and staring at it, but never opening the door till you absolutely cave in and die knowing that the fridge is full of food. It's like bleeding to death from a serious cut while standing in front of the emergency room at the hospital, but failing to walk through the automatic doors when they open to you. That's exactly what it's like. Let me tell you something, honey. Staring at your car waiting, wondering why you ain't going nowhere. That's not, that's, that's crazy. Standing in front of a refrigerator, starving to death, fridge, Full of perfectly good food. Well, that's crazy. Bleeding to death from a cut when if you just go on in the, the, the emergency room, they could wrap that up in just a minute. You'd, you, you'd stop dying. You'd start living. That's just crazy. But let me tell you something. None of those things are God's will either. Well, we've heard it 10,000 times the definition of insanity. It's repeating the same thing over and over and over. Expecting different results yeah. as we continue to do the same mindless, mind numbing routine. I say to someone here today walk over to the car, open the door, stick the key in, and drive. Somebody needs to reach out, even though it's not easy, and open the door of the refrigerator and partake of everything God's promised you. Someone needs to understand that even if you're hemorrhaging and you don't know where the bleeding, when the bleeding is going to stop, you at least need to get to the place where someone can help you. I want you to understand this. You're a child of God and everything that God has in his hand is yours and mine when we decide that we're going to start doing a work for him. The last thing that went through the prodigal son's mind. It wasn't about being reinstated. As a son to the father. Well man that boy had gone as far as a Jewish boy can go. He's not supposed to. Touch anything with a split hoof. Anything foul. Adrian or unclean. And Jesus said that the Jewish boy finds himself in a hog pen. 
Ooh, man. Now, I love me some bacon. But you ain't going to grab your Jewish friends and have to go out and have a BLT with you. They're not going to eat it. They're still not going to eat it. Old Jew boy found himself down there in a pig pen. And the Lord was trying to paint that boy about as low as a Jew can go. He down in the hog pen. Not only was he having to get down in there with him, the Lord said he was down so low a state, he started getting to eat pig food. I love how the King James vernacular makes pig food sound so enticing. And he would fain have filled his belly with a corn of the husk that the swine did eat. No, he thinks he started eating some pig slop. And then all of a sudden, it came to him. Whew. Man, it wasn't so bad back there at the, my dad's house. It wasn't so bad doing him chores. It wasn't so bad the things he would cry. You know, the sacrifice of my dad uh, asked me wasn't, wasn't too terrible, you know, to be in his favor. You know, I ain't been in his favor for a while. I ain't had no food for a while. I ain't had nothing good happening for me. I'm down in here with these pigs. I'm starting to think to eat some pig slop. That's how bad my life has gotten. But then he said, wait, 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 wait. But I remember, even the what hired servants in my father's house have better than this to eat. He said, I will rise and go to my father's house. He said, for I am no longer worthy to be called a son, but I would be glad to just go back and be a servant. Would you stand with me tonight? Now here's what I'm a firm believer of. I'm a firm believer everybody here can do something. I don't care if, if you're mentally challenged, physically challenged. I don't care if you're fat, skinny, tall, handsome, ugly. Woo I believe everybody here can do something. I believe everybody here should do something. That's what I'm believing. I believe in that. I believe the Lord of glory who wants to have every one of his servants show a profit in his economy. He wants everybody doing something. Now let me tell you something. Our church is struggling to grow and to prosper like it needs to because to be honest with you, they're just a handful of folks. They're trying to work and do and, 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 and run ourselves ragged trying to get all things done that need to be done in a church that's growing and emerging. So what needs to happen is we need the entire church, the entire church to get mobile and to become active and start working and doing the work for God. You say, Lord, what can I do? I, I don't sing. Well, not everybody has to sing. Well, I, I can't teach a Sunday school class. Not everybody has to teach a Sunday school class. Maybe your thing is making cookies. Do you know what? We got all these little kids around here and all of them love cookies. And guess what? Even them Sunday school teachers like them cookies. And if there's any cookies left over, sometimes they bring the cookie to the pastor. And maybe you could just make some cookies. And that could be your work. It's that simple to do a work for God. Sister Courtney, you have an amazing gift, a talent. Not everybody gets to see it, but Sister Hudson and I and all the special guests of Calvary get to see one of the many gifts that you have. Sister Courtney can provide a welcome basket of epic proportions. And let me tell you how I know the guests that we've had here are internationally traveled guests who have traveled the world. And they've traveled to the best places and the biggest churches and finest hotels and facilities all over the world. I'm telling you, worldwide. But they tell us every time, we have never seen the equal of the giftedness of whoever provided this for us 
the thoughtfulness, the kindness, the profile of knowing what I like and what to put in that gift basket. Courtney, that is amazing. I don't know if you really understand what a blessing is. I'm not trying to embarrass you, but you know what? That's a work. It makes a strong impression upon your guests that you want to bless. Thank you. Thank you. Just as it's not good enough just to be in church. We've got to be in God's will. But Ed, I think we've got to find God's will and do it. I think we've got to find God's will and perform it. You know? We've got to find it and perform it. Now, I'm going to tell you this. I didn't, I didn't sit up here and tell you that God's will was going to be easy. I just said that when we perform, God's will will be in His favor. And when we have faith, we're going to have the hand of God. And we start operating by faith, speaking in faith, talking in faith. Driving to church when you don't think you can even make it by faith. That's when you're going to start seeing the hand of God, the favor of God. God going before you, making a way where there seems to be no way. Adrian and Crystal drove all the way over here from Rockwall, right? That's where you live. They drove over here for a midweek service tonight from Rockwall. Do y'all know where Rockwall? Y'all have been across the lake in Dallas? Is that San Raymond? What's the name of the lake? Ray Hubbard. The big Ray Hubbard Bridge going all the way out of Dallas. Over there to Rockwall. These guys drove all the way over here for a midweek from Rockwall by faith because they're Trusting the Lord, seeking the Lord, trusting God. I'm going to tell you, God's going to honor that. God's going to bless it just this week. going to prove Himself to you. I'm going to let that go unnoticed. God, God notices everything. The Bible says, honey, that His eye sees a sparrow when it falls to the ground. He knows when you make a sacrifice. He knows when you went the extra mile. He knows when you're trying to do something you ain't never done before. But He's going to bless it. He knows when you gave till it hurt. He knows that you came when you were tired. He knows when you lifted your hands when you felt like sitting on your bottom. I'm here to tell you right now, God blesses the people who have faith to move out in faith in Him. Help us. Please help us, church. Help us, church. Help us, church. The days are evil. God's coming back. We need the hand of God in our service. We need the hand of God to go before. We need prayer warriors like never before. We need people to witness like never before. Help us, please. Lord Jesus, I've delivered my soul and I can go home tonight and I can sleep well. I ask God that you would let the words that have come from my mouth to the hearts of the hearer fall upon hungry hearts that would do the will of God. Lord, it's not good enough just to be here. It's not good enough just to come to church and be in church. But I want to be 110% in your will doing what you asked me to do. I want to be a profitable servant. I want to show a profit in your economy. I want to do something for you. I want when the end comes, Lord, to be a faithful servant to you. And Lord, bless and heal and touch this congregation for your glory. And we ask these things in the mighty name that's above every name. With faith believing in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Can someone say amen? Let the church say amen. Praise the name of the Lord.